at the moment, I, if she doesn't make it back, how can I enjoy Patrick Mahomes, Brock Purdy, yeah. Christian McCaffrey, all those all pros? The passion. Are, what did she do? <laughs> what did she do to you? Why, <laughs> why did she do I'm glad you asked. Yes. I'm glad you asked. Yes. What's up, everyone? Welcome to 888 Sport, and this is a special episode. As you see, we are here in Las Vegas, and I said special for a reason, because Phoebe and I brought a special group of people to enjoy this moment with us, Neil Reynolds and Adam Ray. <laughs> Hello. Thank you, fellas. Thanks Appreciate for having it. us. No, this is awesome. Neil, how do you feel that you don't get to ask the questions from the beginning? Again, you know this freaks me out completely. <laughs> Every week. For 20 weeks, eight hours every Sunday, I ask the questions. So, yeah, just get on with it. You have really good questions, too, by the way. Thank Me you. and Phoebe, we appreciate that. So, on this episode of The Punt, though, I got some questions for you all. We are going to rank the team you think is going to win the Super Bowl. Your score prediction, people love a good score prediction. Yes. Who is going to be your MVP? It will not be that plane overhead making that noise, <laughs> but it will be a player. It will be a player. And your most influential person in the game, period. And then everybody loves a good story. So yeah. your storyline of the game. Before we do the big reveal, please click the link below and subscribe to the channel. You know it's always a good time and we always have great guests. So that's what it's about. But now is the moment you've all been waiting for. The big reveal. You reveal on the BAM yeah. or BAM and then reveal? Yeah, bam, reveal on the BAM. So your Super bam, Bowl 58. 58. Bam. Bam! I like this right, communication. We're like a good yeah, secondary. Sure. Good. Four people that's communicating, of, being on the that's same That's a lot of bouncing. Like if you watch like the, yeah. Super, Super Bowl, Bowl 58. 58. Bam. Bam! I was late! Oh, I was so... I was on the... I had my hands up. I was clean it up. You ready. clean it up. I was late, but my oh. pick isn't late because everybody oh. is a oh. Chiefs. We're going to be... Uh, we're going to be memed by 49er fans. They will throw <laughs> this in our face if we are well, incorrect. So get used to seeing this. I know. I hope I like this beanie. <laughs> I'm going to see it a lot. <laughs> Why are you rolling with the Chiefs? You know what? I think they're the most complete team top to bottom. We've seen the Chiefs, you know, win in a variety of different ways. But this season, it's been the defense. And the defense has carried them. And I think this is what's going to ultimately pay the price for the 49ers. You know, the 49ers got away with it for a couple of weeks against the Packers and against the Lions, who did not play great defensively. And I think now you're running up against Steve Spagnuolo. And that defense, and that is what's going to be the difference. I think being there, done that is the thing for me. Fourth Super Bowl in five years. To your point, win in a different way. So they're kind of doing that through defense, through being much more cautious on offense and, and thinking that 20, 21 points is going to be enough. Yeah. But then they've also got the magic of Mahomes up their sleeve if they need it. So you've got the 49ers who've got the best roster in football, I believe. Yeah. All the pro bowlers, all the all pros. But then the Chiefs have got Mahomes. Yeah. So I think the fact they've been there on this stage and I'm the 49ers can take heart from the comebacks in the playoffs. I would worry that they were wobbling a little bit as well. So that worries bit, yeah. me. Yeah, I mean, you, you both brought up really good points. We saw them against Green Bay. That almost was a loss for them. And, and even against the Lions, you know, it, it's been an uphill battle at times. And I think it does come down to the experience and what, you know, they've been there, done that. You've got You've got Andy Reid at the helm. I mean, with him as your play caller and him as, as someone who's guiding you, I, I think you can't go wrong picking the Chiefs. And, and they're much more comfortable being able to punt the ball away and oh, yeah. know they have that incredible right. defense to back them up and then get them back on the field. I can't help myself. I gotta ask one question. Couple, yeah, Let's one. Let me just have one. Oh my goodness. J Bell, why yeah. are you picking the Chiefs? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> they are playing their best football right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that defense can still. A, a, a possession, yeah. right? Yeah. You get an extra possession to your quarterback, Patrick Mahomes, it's deadly. But I want to know, when I'm looking at these scores, yeah. you got them putting up 34. Well, if you wow. if you cheated all the way and you look down at the end, it is a pick six that seals it. I did not, I did oh. not cheat. <laughs> I did not cheat. One step I'm jumping, time here. I'm, I'm jumping ahead. But, but I yeah. like how you put that together. But you know, yeah, I, I do, again, like, making those big plays when they need to make it. And if you put Brock Purdy into a situation where he's got to go out and make a play, like I think that you can force some mistakes by him and overwhelm these guys in the moment. We saw the 49ers do that to Jordan Love. I think the Chiefs will be able to do that to Brock Purdy. I'm thinking you put pressure on Brock Purdy, you force a turnover, that, that can change everything. I'm guided by the numbers. You know I like stats, yeah, yeah, J-Bell. Yeah, so the Chiefs, 
failed to score more than 20 in 10 of their 20 games this season. So yeah. they're right about that mark and they allow about 17 points per game. Ooh. So I think it's exactly as they've been. They're going to be careful on offense. They're going to do just enough and they're going to lean on that second rank defense. Like yeah, it. and I, I agree with that. I think the defenses for both of these teams, I mean, let's not forget the 49ers defense and what they bring to the table. Those linebackers are yeah. unbelievable. I mean, Fred Warner, the way that he plays, he's going to be running all over the field. So I think that they're going to find ways to slow it down. We talk so much about those first 15 for both of these teams and just understanding, getting a feel for each other and maybe some field goals to start off with. But after that, once once you get to those halftime adjustments, mm -hmm. that's when these two these two quarterbacks, these two coordinators and head coaches really take off. MVP. Mm. Yeah. I got to go with you first because you got Pacheco on that list. Isaiah Pacheco. Well, here's the thing. like Everybody will assume it's going to be Patrick Mahomes. But once you're a quarterback and you win – an MVP, then they can vote for somebody else. Like, the the quarterback wins automatically the first time. If you think back when, like, Peyton Manning won his MVP, didn't deserve it. It was a Dom Rhodes game. It was Bob Sanders. But it's like, well, Pey Peyton Manning finally won a Super Bowl. We give him the MVP. And then you can start to spread it around. Like, if he had not won that Super Bowl in Super Bowl 50, sorry, Von Miller, we're going to go <laughs> with him. So, for that reasoning, I'm going to be like, now they can be a little bit more like, oh, like, the running back should have won it a couple of years ago, but they had to give it to Mahomes. The only thing that I will say is that the only person it won't be is Brock Purdy. Because I feel like if the 49ers win, no, no, if the 49ers win and he threw for 500 yards and five touchdowns, it'd be like, yeah, we're giving it to Debo. Yeah. Because nobody ever wants to give him credit. No, they so I'm don't. like, he's, he, he's the exception to the rule there. I just realized I wrote notes you for myself. Right. MVP. MVP. I like it. <laughs> but it is going to be Patrick Mahomes. Because I think the least imaginative group of people yes. on the planet are those who vote for the Super Bowl MVP. Yes. Mahomes got yeah. it. I mean, I, I kind of get your point, but Mahomes got it last year with 180 passing yards. Yes. Yeah. So I think if the Chiefs are going to win, Mahomes only needs to get close to 200 yards and they, he's going to win MVP for a third time and win a third Super Bowl. Yeah, and I think so many people watch the games that he's in and they think of those magic moments. Those stand out almost more than the stats, the, the off-script kind of moves that he the makes. The run he had in the second half on exactly. one leg against yeah, Philadelphia. That exactly. One, yeah. that I mean, probably won it. It's almost like emotive at times when it comes to Mahomes because we get we get the opportunity to watch him so much throughout the season and we almost take for granted at times what he's able to do and then you see him on this big stage and perhaps against a quarterback like Brock Purdy, it stands out even more what he can do at Mahomes that being. Yeah, when you look at Pacheco, he is that energy of that Ooh. team, yeah. right? And they're going to get him the ball, so he's going to have a lot of volume carries, but it will come down to the moment. And if yeah. Patrick Mahomes makes a play, <laughs> I know. a big play, they are going to hand him that trophy. <laughs> and if three kneel downs are still going to be I'm going to walk around the uh, the press box and be like, look at that Isaiah Pacheco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He'd be a great MVP. <laughs> Angry <laughs> runner. Can you <laughs> see it? Patrick Mahomes has won a couple. He doesn't need a third. Like, let it spread the wealth a little messaging. bit. He's going like to have it. an impact on this game for sure. And when we talk about most influential players, yeah. right, that are going to have an impact on that game, I did go with Rasheed Rice because I've already talked about Isaiah Pacheco, but it, we've seen like the wide receivers starting to step up. MVS, who had brutal drops during the season, then goes out and has a huge play in the AFC title game. And it's those receivers. Even last year, like Kadarius Toney, who's done nothing in the NFL, right. has one play Fair to his point. credit. Does, has one play to his credit. And it's a Super Bowl play, which is like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll, I'll take that. Like, yeah. That would be okay with me. I think uh, Rasheed Rice is somebody who's going to step up in this one. We saw it during the course of the season. They started to lean on him a little bit more. Right. We saw rookie wide receivers really step up this year, including guys like Tank Dell. And these guys are getting up to speed, and I think Rasheed Rice has a big play like Kadarius Tony did last year. The way he's him and Kelsey, adapting yeah. to zone yeah. coverage. Right. And you see when he talked about it, he's like, I listen to Pat. And Travis Kelsey, <laughs> whatever they tell me to do. Mahomes has a very small trust tree right now. It's yeah. Travis Kelsey and it's Rasheed Rice. Kelsey had 23 catches in the playoffs. Rasheed Rice had 20, and the next best has six. Yeah, yeah. they're literally the offense right now. But I'm so I wanted to go Kelsey, but I'm not. But because of the defense, I'm going Nick Bolton. Ooh. Christian McCaffrey, we know all Tap about him. Right? 25 yeah. touchdowns in the reg in the regular season and the playoffs, led the NFL in rushing yards, scrimmage yards. He's over 100 yards every game he's ever played in his life in average yards per game from scrimmage. So I've got to go Nick Bolton to shut him down. He leads them in tackles. Uh, I think when he came back from injury, he was influential. So if it's going to be the Chiefs defense, then I think Bolton's going to shut down McCaffrey, which means 
Purdy then has to take to the air to the stuff yeah. you were kind of talking about. Yeah, I like between the three of us, we've kind of covered the defense completely. <laughs> but I went with Drew Tranquil on this one. I loved what he did against the Ravens. I think his ability to play in coverage, to also blitz, which is a, a, a key of Spagnuolo's defense, and then also just set the edge at the line of scrimmage because of that run game. He's going to be super influential in this Um and he's just a tackling machine. I mean, you don't, you never know what yeah. Spags is going to give you. Yeah, smart player, too. They can do a lot with him. I was thinking about pressure, right? You want to yeah. pressure Purdy. You yeah. want to frustrate him. You want to slow this mm -hmm. offense down. Chris Jones shows up for the moments. Yes, yeah. And even if he doesn't get there, he bats down a lot of passes. And you look at Trent McDuffie coming off the edge, blitzing, causing fumbles, forcing that turnover that needs to happen. That's why I'm rolling with those two. Uh, I wasn't supposed to pick two, but you know what? No, sure, sure. It's your show. You're, you're 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 the host. Host. When I you're do, the host, you can do it. Is that the <laughs> rules? That is how it goes. Have you not oh. learned that yet? Neil, you're right. You can do what you want. Yeah. Do when as you I say, want. not I as I like do. This. Ask for what you want in your coffee, I Jay. But I this like is this. Kind of <laughs> I like this. We're going to talk about that a little later. Every good game, Neil, has a storyline. You love a good storyline. I do love a good storyline. Story so we're going to start with you. What right. is your storyline of the game? Give it to the people. So for me, it's all about the Chiefs' defense against the 49ers' offense. We've all kind of said Brock Purdy's got a mistake in him. He's also got a 400-yard passing game if he gets all those weapons. Kittle, yep. Ayuk, McCaffrey out of the backfield, Debo Samuel. So if Brock Purdy gets rolling and they score 28, 30 points, I don't think the Chiefs can keep up. So it's about the Chiefs making enough of those stops so they can win by 20 points to 17. And I think there's going to be a couple of field goals uh, in the fourth quarter that matter. I think yeah. Jake Moody's going to miss one for the 49ers. He's missed a couple in the playoffs. And Harrison Buck, who never misses, Clutch. is going to make one. That's going to be the difference. So defense is the key for the Chiefs and a little bit of special teams. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, that's the whole thing. And as you see, the score is a little robust, as you pointed out a little bit earlier. It'll be one of those instances with Super Bowls. They always start off low scoring. Like, it's a low scoring game, and I think it'll be very low scoring in the first half, something like 13-3, to three, something like that. And then the Chiefs get a little bit of roll, and then the 49ers start a furious comeback and start chipping away. And as I said, you know, Brock Purdy's going to get the ball, and they'll be like, this is your moment. This is your Steve Young, Joe Montana moment. And he turns into Jeff Garcia. Oh. But whatever, you know. Oh, poor bro. Yeah. Oh. He did wow. Jeff like that. I, I still have a college rivalry with uh, Jeff Garcia. He played at San Jose State. Yes, he did. So I can't, I can't let that go as a Cal State Fullerton guy. I just really think that that Chiefs defense is going to make a play. Like, it, who does it come down to? And everybody seems to be pointing towards the defense. Yeah. And I think that it's a turnover. They got at the him end there. Of, the yeah. of course they got to come through in the clutch. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And then for me, I did go with a kind of basic halftime adjustments only because we've seen what both these teams have done coming out of the halves. And this is huge for Kyle Shanahan. He's been in these situations multiple times now. You're looking at the Falcons. You're you're looking at when he first started with the 49ers. And that pressure on him to think, how can I beat them in the second half is going to be massive. So seeing what they're doing but you're going against a Steve Spagnuolo de defense who literally lights it up in the second half. You don't even know if you're going to be getting the same looks whatsoever. So this is super key in terms of the game. And they've got a longer halftime, and we got Usher halftime. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, that's going to be a party. More thinking. That's going to yeah. be a party. Yep, <laughs> loving this club. Um, <laughs> so you got, a, you got a fourth quarter turnover as well. <laughs> yes, because I love fourth quarter football yeah. because it comes down to players. We've seen it all. We know what you're going to do that game, and it's all about can we stop you. And at that point, Spagnola dials up something, some pressure, some unique look. They take away their biggest threats on offense, and Brock Purdy forces the ball in there, turn over, get the ball back to Mahomes. That's the game. Because I, because I really like Brock, and I feel like we've really bashed Brock here. Yeah. You know who the best quarterback is against the Blitz in the entire NFL this year? Well, Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy. Because that, so it's a West Coast It could Coast come offense. down to that. It, it is. Have, come the down thing to about that. that offense is it has answers for the blitz. Yeah. Like, they yeah. want to be blitzed. But when it comes down to that fourth quarter, and yeah. you know what's going on, and that frustration, and you're pressing. Yeah. That's why it's I, such a fascinating matchup, because it will play strength against strength. Yeah. There, yeah. When, that it's, when it's on the line. That got you there. And we got to pick somebody, Neil. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. What is when, when like, you think about when the Super Bowls that Tom Brady lost, like, he wasn't losing to Drew Brees – and some of the elite quarterback, Russell Wilson, the elite quarterbacks in the NFC, he lost to Eli Manning twice yeah, yeah. and Nick Foles. Yeah. So it's not out of the realm of possibility that one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time is 
felled by Brock Purdy. Wow, so Brock Purdy is now Jeff Garcia and Nick Foles. And Nick Foles. <laughs> hey, y'all better be Foles careful. You, it. I you know how I feel about Eli. That's my teammate now. <laughs> I didn't say Eli. Eli. Did you notice that? I didn't say Eli. I won't Eli. let him do us like that. Oh, come on. <laughs> Neil, you are a serious journalist. I see <laughs> your preparation every single week. So you are the man to ask because you right. got it all. Is Taylor Swift going to make it back <laughs> from Japan <laughs> to be at the Super Bowl oh, on time? What? Because love in this club will be playing and there's love on the field. Do you want to go that way around first? <laughs> no, uh, you're the guy I with mean, all the death. He started with the serious journalist, so you notice he didn't look my direction. <laughs> like, I felt like that was a shot at me. Like, Neil, you're the serious journalist. Not clown boy over here. I mean, I a stupid no, beanie. No, we're and good. Bruce Leash. No, no, no. We lived in the same once, area. Once I, once I came after Eli, I feel like I've now crossed the line. I've been waiting. Point. You're out of the club now. I waited till the end. <laughs> yeah. That was a good bit of time. Are we out of time now? <laughs> <laughs> no, we we no, want I, to know your answer. So no. Yes, I think I'm, I'm desperate for her to be back because that, at the moment, I, if she doesn't make it back, how can I enjoy Patrick Mahomes, Brock Purdy, yeah. Christian McCaffrey, all those all pros, Chris Jones, Nick Bosa. I mean, all of it's wasted yeah. if she it doesn't is. come back. So, yes, I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm going to sleep Saturday night. <laughs> I might just stay up. Wow. Because... <laughs> I, I, I need, I need her there. The passion. Are, what did she do? The what did she do to you? Why, yeah. why, why so did she do I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Okay. Continue. okay. So every Sunday night on yeah. Sky Sports. Of course. Chiefs score a touchdown. Producers in my ear. Got some wonderful shots of Taylor Swift. Of do you want to show them? No. no. We're going to show them anyway. Okay. <laughs> So we show them. Neil, you're going to talk over them. Well, yes, I have to. I'm the presenter. I'm here, yeah, whatever. So I talk over them, and then you see ping, 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 ping on the notifications. Neil, you're an idiot. Neil, why are you talking about Taylor Swift? It's not all me. Oh, no. You're yeah. pigeonholed. Yeah, you're pigeonholed, yeah, that's, really. That's at least legitimate. But I'm going to tell you what happened. He started to make me talk about it. He did. Yeah. He's like, yeah. he'd be like, he'd be like, Jay Bill. Yeah. So. This is you, baby. Not Taylor Swift. Like, okay. <laughs> Just pass the hot no, potato. I really that's what that go. was all about. It makes sense. No, it does make sense. So I guess it has impacted your life a little bit. Just but everybody bit. else at home, it has not bothered you. <laughs> it is not. She's not impacting your enjoyment of the game. She makes, you know what? She makes enough money to actually buy the Chiefs. If the Hunt she family does. ever wanted to like sell, which they don't. See, what, Gosh, I'm she what so they can trade down, everybody. <laughs> what happens, Adam, is I like to make this all about me. Of course. <laughs> now you have a so, like, like that, of all the people, of all the millions of people who will be watching the Super Bowl, Neil has a legitimate gripe. You're like, okay, yeah, it's okay. Like, all right, I, I, I buy it. it. I get it now. Like, oh, I don't agree with it, but yeah. I get it. Like, I, I know the process. I'm like, okay. But you, the guy who's going to be sitting here at BrewDog, upset, throwing his chips and guacamole because it's <laughs> pop stars on the TV? Who cares? Like, what? If, and it's like, what if they show The Rock? Do you get upset? They, oh, The Rock's here. Like, no, you're fine. No. Or anybody else, any other celebrity who's there, or sorry, ce celebrity. Anybody else, they're like, oh, this is cool. Like, how fun? But nope. Yeah. She, <laughs> is, she has right? gotten everybody's ire because she's so talented and so good at everything that everybody's just upset. Listen, as a former player, I've always said to these pop stars, stop dating all those other guys. Come to us. Yeah. We're the ones. And guess what? <laughs> Kelsey held it down for us. Good choice by you, Taylor Swift. I want to thank this all-star panel. I appreciate y'all. It's been fun. And we want to thank you for tuning in. And we want to know what your predictions are. Let us know in the comments below. Till next time, 888 Sport the Punt. And please enjoy the big game in Taylor Swift, and we'll see you next yeah. week. Hit up Neil. Hit up Neil about your Taylor Swift takes.